Okay, guys, let's get going here. First off, make sure that you are <coughs> have the page pulled up to Activity 1.1, which is found on page, one second, let me check mine, M1-9. So M1-9 is where you should be. And before we do M1-9, down there at the bottom, where we start with example one, you should have these graphs cut out. Now, you don't see those graphs on that page, so please turn to page M1-17. You will see on <clears throat> M1-17 these eight graphs. You need to get some scissors, cut them out, lay them on your table, then have some tape or glue off the side so that we can then use these to paste into our notes for today. All right, question one, daredevil. We want to figure out the graph that goes with um, the scenario, and we also want to figure out what is the independent and dependent quantity, which we did yesterday. So let's get going here. Grayson completes a dive from a cliff 75 feet above the river. It takes him only one and a half seconds to hit the water, and then another half a second to descend 10 feet in the water. Okay, let's identify the independent and dependent first. Okay, the independent quantity in the problem is you always have time. It's pretty much always going to be time. So we have time in this problem. And the time then is going to be represented as the independent quantity. About 99% of the time, time is it. Time is the independent. We have units of seconds. The dependent quantity then is our other one in this case of what's being influenced by time. It's falling or diving off of a cliff. So that's going to be your height above water and that units is in feet so we now need to figure out which of the uh, graphs does this scenario match up with so the first thing I kind of want you to do is visualize you watching Grace in here jump off a cliff diving into water so I've got water here I got my cliff Grayson's about to dive into there so as he dives, he's up here at 75 feet. And as he dives down, he hits the water. Now he's not gonna continue down forever, no. He is then eventually gonna kind of even out, kind of plateau out, and then he'll come up above. So we wanna to try to find a graph that's gonna match that. As he's diving down, diving down, I'm thinking of a graph that is decreasing. So let's look at your, um, Let's look at your eight graphs, and I'm going to read this from left to right. As I read these graphs from left to right, what are your eyes doing? Are they going up or are they going down? Graph A, this is going up, okay? So it's not going to be graph A. Graph B, your eyes are going up, so it's not increasing, okay? Or it's increasing, we don't want that. Now, graph C is going down, but then it bounces and goes back up forever. That's not quite what's happening here with the water. He's not going then above the water after he uh, comes underneath the, comes out from diving below it. He's not going to automatically pop up above it and keep going up and up and up. Graph D looks possible because your eyes are going down. This is decreasing. But so is graph E. Graph E is decreasing, so that's a possibility. Now graph F is going up and then coming down. That was not what's being described. Graph G goes up. You plateau, you go up, but it's increasing. So that's not it. Now graph H looks promising. It is going down as well. So we've narrowed it down to either D, E, or H. Now, as we look through there, okay, let's think about this. He um, dove off a cliff, and what I'm looking here is these axes. These axes are helping me. What I'm noticing on this y-axis then is this particular graph is going down, and then it goes below that, as if you're going below the surface of the water. Graph D, it does not go below the axis, and graph H does not either. So actually then, we can cross off those, and we are going to choose graph E. So tape in graph E right now. Now we're going to label the axes here, and the independent quantity is always your x-axis. Your dependent quantity is always your y-axis, okay? So in this instance, the x, uh, sorry, graph E being the x-axis, I'm going to label that as the time we've already done. 
That was in seconds. Uh, let me clean that up a bit. Scoop that down. And the y-axis is going to be the dependent that was the height above water. And that was in feet. Okay, we're almost done now. We chose our graph. We labeled the axes. We need to give it a scale. It says he hits the water in one and a half seconds. So here's where he hits the water at one and a half seconds. So you're not going to make your scale go by ones. Because if it is, well, he's not going to hit the water at one and a half. Okay, that doesn't make sense with the problem. So to fix that, we're going to make our graph go by 0 0.2. 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, I'm running out of room, 0 0.8, 1.0, 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, so 1.8. By doing that, we can get into that one and a half that's shown on the graph. Now your height above water he said, uh, they said that he was starting at 75 feet above, which is way up here. So the question is, using my tick marks, how can I get to 75 feet? And that's going by tens, okay? If you went by ones, you're not gonna get there. Going by tens is how we get there. All right, that's first one down. Let's look at the next one. Okay. You obviously already eliminated graph E, so it's not gonna be graph E. Now let's read it. Something's fishy. Candace is the building manager for the Crowley Enterprise Office Building. One of her responsibilities is recleaning the office building's 200 gallon aquarium. For cleaning, she must remove the fish from the aquarium and drain the water. The water drains at a constant rate of 10 gallons per minute. Okay, so I've got time. Time is almost always my independent. And that's in minutes. What else is going on here? You're draining a big old aquarium. You got water. You got water that's draining, and that units is in gallons. So to try to figure out what's happening here, again, you're draining a tank. You start off with 200 gallons, and you start draining it out. So you're draining. You're decreasing. Anything that is increasing here is not going to happen. Now, this one is, yes, decreasing, but it increases. We didn't talk about filling up the tank yet. That one's increasing. This one's increasing. So that leaves me with D or H. The key word on this problem is constant rate. That's a straight, that's like a straight line, constant rate. So we are gonna choose letter H. Once you've choose the graph, tape it in there and let's label it out. We said time was our independent. That is always your X axis and we are in minutes. Okay, that's our x-axis, and then our y-axis is our dependent, which in this case is water, which is gallons. Now, per minute here, it says it uh, drains at 10 gallons per minute. So that's fine. We're going to go ahead and go by ones. Now the gallons, we are starting off at a 200 gallon tank. You go by ones, you're not gonna get there. So we're gonna make our graph go by 20s. As I make my go graph go by 20s, that's how I can get up there. Okay, I'm gonna pause it there.